Welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on Wednesdays, so be sure to check those out as well. Today, we're going to go over a few projects here in the garage, and then we're going to go outside and talk about the Model T. So, uh, real quick here in the garage, I've got the Honda in here, and of course the 356 is still here in the Land Cruiser. So, the Honda, if you don't know, this is my Honda S600. This is the first car that Honda ever made. Before this, they made motorcycles. And so this engine is very much like a motorcycle engine. It's a 600cc four-cylinder engine. It revs to 9,500 RPM. It's an amazing car to drive, and it was extremely fun to work on. The rear end has a chain drive system, very much like a motorcycle. It's, it's very much a motorcycle in a car's body. The reason it's here is because it's time for an oil change. Like motorcycles, you change oil more frequently in this engine. It's every thousand miles. So I'm going to be doing an oil change soon. And so what I do, or what I'm going to do, and I've done in the past, is I'm going to do an oil change and drive video. I did this for my uh, Porsche 912. I also did it for the Classic Mini. And it's a really cool way for you guys to get to see up close the engine and kind of the whole mechanics of it. And also, each car... It's a little bit different how you change the oil. It's kind of unique. It's very different than a modern car in a lot of ways. So you'll get to see kind of the oil change and then we go for a nice drive. So you get to experience that as well. So I'm gonna make one of those videos for the Honda because like I said, it's time for an oil change. The 356, of course, is still in the garage. And if you watch those videos, you would have seen this thing was completely smashed when I got it. The roof was uh, smashed in, the glass was all gone. The fender was smashed in, the interior was mostly gone or partially gone. I went through it cosmetically and got it back, basically beat it back into shape, put new glass in it, redid the parts of the interior that were missing, and so that's it. That's the aesthetic side of the car basically done. I'm not going to paint it. Uh, it's, it was a wrecked car when I bought it. It will continue to be a wrecked car, and I will just go through it mechanically now to get it running and driving, and then I will enjoy it as it is. So if you're not familiar with this project, this is another one you could check out. You can see the inside is actually a nice place to be, even though the outside still looks the way it does. So the next step for this car is the mechanical side of things. The engine does not run, it's in pieces. I have some other parts from an, a previous 912 build. This actually has a 912 engine in it. So I'm gonna be pulling the engine and the transmission soon. And that's where I think we're going to start with the mechanical side. I'll start the rebuild on the engine and go through the transmission. And then I've got a lot of the stuff already for the brakes. And then we'll go through the fuel system and we'll get this thing running and driving and get it back on the road. So that's what's going on with the 356. And I do plan on focusing on that very quickly uh, as soon as the Model T is done, which the Model T is very close to being done. The other thing we have in the garage here is the Land Cruiser. Now this has been going on, this project, for about a year and a half. The frame is basically done, the engine's been rebuilt, the brakes are all done, it's got new wheels and tires on it. The frame looks new and amazing and ready to go, but there's still a lot of stuff to do on the body before I can put that back on the frame and get it all back together and actually drive it. So the last video I did on the Land Cruiser was repairing this side of the tub. I still need to, and I've mentioned this before, I still need to repair this rocker panel and patch some sections of the floor and do a little bit more welding like in all these little holes along the side. So a little bit more metal work and then it'll be pretty much ready to paint. So the next step in this, the plan is to undercoat it and spray the inside with Raptor liner. I'm gonna get it tinted to match the color that the Land Cruiser is going to be. So I don't plan on doing a video showing this rocker panel being repaired. I already did one on the other side. It's repetitive, so I'm not going to do another video on it. So the plan is for the next video for this to actually be when I spray the Raptor liner on, which will also include I've got to paint the firewall, uh, and I've got to paint some sections with actual paint, not Raptor liner, but paint on the inside of it, and then do the Raptor liner uh, top and bottom, and then this thing can go back on the frame. So the goal is for the next video for the Land Cruiser to cover all of that. 
painting what has to be painted on the inside, wrapped your liner and get it back on the frame. So that's a lot of work. It's not gonna be done in a week. Uh, it's gonna take several weeks. It's gonna take place over the period of several weeks. So I'm not sure exactly how soon that video will come out, but I will. I am still gonna keep working on this and I'm very motivated to get it off of this cart and back onto the frame. So that one, then the frame can move around under its own power because I can put the steering wheel and the pedals in and I can actually drive it in and out instead of pushing it. And then two, it won't take up so much space because right now the body takes up this space, the frame takes up another space. So I'm ready to, to get those things combined and uh, have and free up some space. So that's the Land Cruiser, that's the Honda, that's the 356. Now we're gonna talk about the Model T. So if you saw my last build video, you would have seen that I reupholstered the seats. Now, uh, I've mentioned this in the past. I do not do upholstery. I am not an experienced person when it comes to redoing things like this. I do have a sewing machine. I can sew technically. I wouldn't say I'm good at it. And I wouldn't say I'm good at doing upholstery. I do like the way that the seats come out. Uh, came out. I think it looks pretty good. Obviously, it's way better than it was originally. And I'm very happy with the way they are. Sure, uh, a professional would have done a better job, but that's not what I'm going for. I want to build this myself and enjoy it. I'm not trying to make it look brand new, as you can probably tell from the outside. So I'm very happy with the way the seats came out. It was a lot of work. It took pretty much the entire week, every day, working on it. But I did finally get that done, so that's a big step forward. The carpet, uh, I mentioned the carpet kit, which ended up just being these two pieces of carpet. So not only, I've been unhappy with them from the beginning because it's only two pieces and I expected a lot more, but also it doesn't fit at all, really. I mean, this shape doesn't match that shape, even in the slightest. It doesn't cover the whole floor. I'm definitely not gonna be using this carpet. So basically I just wasted money on that. I'm, I'm still deciding exactly what I'm gonna do for the flooring. I actually, I actually don't think that the, the wood floor looks bad. I think the black looks just fine. And if I carpet this, then I'm gonna wanna carpet the sides, and then I'm gonna wanna carpet this, and then I'm gonna, and it just kind of, I don't, I'm not sure that that's necessary really. Because again, I'm not trying to make the car look brand new. If anything, the interior probably looks too good for the rest of the car. And I don't really want to start going um, overboard. So I may, I do want to have something on the floor for sound and heat insulation. Because even though I've just barely driven it up and down the street, you can feel a lot of heat coming in through here. So I do, and it'll also quiet it down a bit. So I do want to have something. And maybe that's going to be carpet or maybe that's going to be some kind of like rubber mats. I believe the open cars all had rubber mats anyway. It was only these closed cars that got carpet. So that's something I'm still kind of deciding what I'm gonna do and we'll see. But one thing I do know is I'm not gonna use this carpet. I, I think this is crap. I've mentioned before these side kind of kick panels that go here. Some people have told me that a lot of times they were just a black type of kind of board that went there and so Again, if I do rubber on the floor, I may just make these like a black vinyl and I kind of want to put a pocket on them anyway so they can put like the registration and stuff on the car or, you know, have a place to put that stuff inside the car. So anyway, that's the seats, that's the carpet. Also, I've done several other things since that build video. I replaced the starter which seems to have fixed the slow starting problem. So actually we'll do a cold start on this in a minute and I'll show you how it starts now. I also added this shutoff switch because uh, for those of you that don't know, the starter button is a button on the floor. It's not the key. You don't use the key to turn it over to start it. And that button is always live. So it's always connected to the starter. So whether the key is turned on or not, if you hit that button, it's gonna start cranking over the starter. And if you were to happen to leave it in gear and kids are playing around there or whatever, it can be issues there. So I got the shutoff switch. I did install the new starter and I wired it directly to the switch without this cutoff in it. And I cranked it over several times because I wanted to see, I wanted to compare 
with this cutoff switch and without it to make sure I wasn't losing cranking speed by adding this switch. And it didn't. It cranked over much faster when, when I didn't have the switch in because the starter was new, which I was happy with. And then when I added this cutoff switch, it still cranked just as fast as far as I could tell as it did without it. So that's really good. So that we've got that on. I also have mentioned in the past there were some fuel leaks. So I've addressed that as well. So on the bottom of the fuel tank, I replaced the sediment bowl because mine was leaking. So that fixed the leak there. I also replaced the fuel line, which fixed the leak here. I also added this shutoff valve. So now I can shut the fuel off right here instead of crawling under the car to shut it off at the fuel tank. So that's an added bonus. Also, I replaced the little needle valve that goes right under here that's controlled by the float in the carburetor because I don't think the old one sealed and shut off the fuel and so I think that was part of the leaking problem. So I may have, fingers crossed, actually fixed all the fuel leaks. It doesn't seem to be leaking fuel anymore. The oil leaks are a different story. I did replace all these bolts and nuts like I mentioned before. So I was able to more accurately secure the oil pan to the engine with an even amount of torque on those bolts versus the old castle nut bolts with cotter pins, which sometimes you were limited. You couldn't get it as tight as you want because you had to line up for the cotter pin. So I did all that, but it still seems to be leaking uh, oil. Maybe not as bad, but it is still leaking. So that's still kind of a work in progress. The other thing is the generator. I mentioned in the past it didn't work and then it started working and then we looked at the amp meter, we saw it running and you could see the amp meter that it was charging at like 20 amps. And somebody was nice enough to send me a message and let me know that that's way too high and it's gonna burn up the something in the generator if I don't adjust it. But good news, it's easy to adjust. There's a bolt here and then you can slide this thing and it, it adjusts the amperage. So uh, I was very grateful for someone sending me that comment. And I went to try that, and unfortunately now it doesn't work at all. The problem is you can see some people have like repaired the wires in here. There's like some plastic blue connectors there that they put on the wires. So there's obviously a connection issue in there. And I had to move some of those wires around before I found this bolt to do the adjustment. So I'm pretty sure that in the process I've made, messed up the connection, which was probably the, the problem in the first place. And so now it doesn't charge at all. So fortunately, me trying to fix that has created a bigger problem. So I will be taking it out and either trying to fix it or possibly get a new one. We'll see. But it's not that big of a deal right now. The car actually starts a lot easier with the new starter. So you can get several starts out of it, even if you're not recharging the battery right away. So anyway, that's, um, that's all good news. Yeah, we'll do a cold start in just a second. You can see here I've got the eyes back in the car. And a lot of people have asked me, and I've said in the past, I'm happy to send you the file. I can send you the digital file. So if you have a Model T and you want to put these in there, you can. So just send me a message or an email or something. And I'll, um, I'll send you the file. I don't know of any place where you can buy this. I just had it printed on this board and then cut it down to fit the windshield. And I was just test fitting it now that I have the rear view mirror and everything back in the car and making sure that it, it sits in here okay. But anyway, we'll take that out and we will see if we can get this thing to start. So once again, the car has sat for a little while. It's been a few days since I started it. Let's see, this carpet's kind of in the way, but uh, so we'll kind of go through the steps. I already turned on the power, that cutoff switch. I already turned on the fuel at the carburetor. So the next step will be to make sure that the timing is all the way forward, it's all the way retarded. And then we'll give it a little bit of throttle here. And then I'm gonna pull on this, which is the choke. And while I'm doing that, I will press down on this pedal down here with my foot. And the parking brake is on. I always want to make sure I got the parking brake on. So now we'll see how long it takes uh, to start when it's cold. Now that the starter works better. 
So here we go. So as you may remember before, I would crank it over by hand several times because I was concerned that the battery couldn't crank it over long enough because it cranked so slow, but now it's cranking a little bit better. So we're in the process now where we're priming it. So as I pull this out and crank it over, we're, start, we're priming it. So we're gonna get a little bit of fuel into the cylinder and then pretty soon it should fire off. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we've primed it. I'm sure about that. We did not turn on the key first, so very important. Like I said, the starter works whether the key is on or not. So now it's probably flooded. We're going to see here what it takes to get it to start. Oh, there we go. That made all the difference, huh? turn this off all right so that's it for this week guys okay so I almost forgot to tell you what's coming up next for the Model T so real quick I mentioned this before but next up is going to be the rear end so there inside the differential here there are some shims I believe they're called like thrust washer or something like that and after this amount of time, they typically have gone bad. Look who it is, Walter. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you, Walter. So anyway, the I have to take the rear end off. I'm gonna pull the whole rear end off, go through the differential, make sure everything's okay, replace at least the thrust washers because after this amount of time, they typically have degraded so much that they start to break apart and they can cause some real issues. And then I also have some brakes that I'm going to be adding to the parking brake back here. So the shoes originally are just metal shoes and they go onto a metal drum. So it only works as a parking brake. It does not help you stop the car. But the brake shoes that I have have actual brake pads on them so that you should be able to use them in case of an emergency to actually stop the car. As well as they'll function as a parking brake as well. So anyway, that's what's coming up next for the Model T. I don't think that I'm going to have that video out next Wednesday. I think it's probably going to be the following Wednesday because once I get that rear end out, I have to take it apart and figure out exactly what things need to be replaced. It could be that I need extra bearings, things like that. So then I have to get those parts and then put it back together. Walter. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not going to be done in time for Wednesday's video. So it's probably going to be the following week that I'll have a new build video out for the Model T. Maybe I'll get the Honda driving video out next Wednesday, or maybe there won't be a video. But there will at least be an update video next Wednesday. So I'll let you know what's going on with the rear end and what progress I'm making. And then basically, once we get that rear end done, we're back on the road. I mean, this thing's ready for a drive. So very soon... There'll be a driving video with this, and I'm really looking forward to that. So, okay. Thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Walter, you want to say bye? Okay. Bye.